So today I'll be discussing about the TypeSense dashboard and how to get started with the TypeSense dashboard. So at the end of today, you should be able to understand the TypeSense dashboard and you should be ready to use it for your project. TypeSense is an open source search engine. It's a type of tolerant search engine where you can that you can integrate into your app that gives you very easy and nice user experience. It makes it, you can just pick up the documentation and read how to in, integrate into your app. There are different contents on Avia website where you can read on how to integrate it. There are different content existing. More content are still coming up on how to integrate it. So TypeSense is an open source search engine that is, is open source and it is very cheap and easy to use. You don't need to break a bank to create a search engine. So the experience is also very nice. And what do I love about TypeSense? Number one thing I love about TypeSense is the, is the ease to learn and use it. When I remember the first time I tried to write the content about TypeSense, I had to, I was afraid due to the previous experience I was having on open source search, on search engine generally, or other libraries I've used because of some libraries or open or libraries that I have integrated into my project. I've kind of had to learn some of them. They have high, like the rate at which I can adapt to it is very high. But TypeSense welcome, welcomed me the very first time I read the documentation. So it's very easy to write about this. Creating content about it shows that, yeah, I understand this particular library. So that's number one thing I understand. I love about TypeSense. The second thing I love is the documentation. If immediately you read, the documentation is open source also, you can just in case you notice something you want, you like to add to the documentation, there's on the documentation page, you can actually go to edit page where when you edit to request, if you request to edit page, you can contribute to the, the documentation like I'm showing here. Documentation is very nice and very easy to learn and understand. So that's the most two things I love about TypeSense. And the third thing, the major thing is, is open source that I can, like I've been saying, TypeSense is open source. You can contribute to it. If you notice any of this you need to add to it, you can contribute to it and it will be added. So I think we need to add this point. We can now dive into our the main topic for today, which is the type sense dashboard and how to use it. Okay, this is the, to access the type sense dashboard, you need to go through the type sense main website. So type sense main website, like type sense. This is the main website of TypeSense where you can actually access the that dashboard and dashboard is the TypeSense cloud. So when you click on it, you get access to come to the TypeSense cloud and you can log in. As you all know that developers, you need to use search engine and every developer should have their GitHub rep, GitHub username and account where they push their project to. So you can just log in through this link, through this button. When you click on this button, you'll be logged in and you have access to the TypeSense dashboard dashboard and to be able to do some other features of the dashboard on this home page also you see more details and more explanation about type sense dashboard you can see the lightning fast a globally distributed and such such as a service so it's very nice you can and this is the look of the dashboard when everything is created you can search this is the general look of how it looks like when i've created all important fields you have created your document, you have created your collection, you see your schema and other interesting things on the TypeSense dashboard. So this is how it will look like. Also, there are other details of the maximum size of the RAM. You can configure it 768 gigram. That's the maximum size it allows. And that's a very nice amount of RAM that it allows you to configure to. So that those are the very nice features of TypeSense and let's get into it let's get into it so on the pricing page apart from the local pricing page on this pricing page this is where you have to dedicate your cluster so the cluster is if you are creating for example you are creating creating a new project where you want to integrate a search engine into it you need to create a new cluster or spin up a cluster when you spin up a cluster you now create a collection where you add your different records so here on the pricing page you will see where to add the memory size you want the maximum, like I said earlier, was 768 gig. So when you click on 768 gig, you, the amount is 11.9. So that's quite cheap enough to use. That's not is not that it's not expensive to 
actually pay for and implement your project. So on the page, another feature I like on this present um, page, on this present page is the ability to actually suggest the memory size, like recommending a memory size for your project. So if you have the number of your records you want to input, for example, if you have 100,000 records, so you can just click it then if you suggest the RAM you will need, which is 0.5 gig RAM, if you increase the amount of records, it can tell you the range you need. So that's a very nice thing. So with this recommendation, it will be very easy to know what you need to in order to get started using TypeSense. Other requirements are there, like what it offers, that particular amount you are paying. You see what you need to get with that particular amount you are paying for. So, and if you don't understand any other thing or you need more explanation on what you need for your project, you can schedule a demo with the maintainers of TypeSense. When you click on schedule a demo, you book a particular time and date on Calendly where you get to meet the maintainers. They explain better to you what you need for your to achieve your goal of integrating a search engine into your app. Yeah, so that's a very nice feature. I would advise you to actually book a call with them. Also, you can see the comparison with other search engine like Agolia, where you see the amount, the difference between the amount. You can see that it's very nice to actually use TypeSense because it makes it easy for it. It makes you spend less money on achieving your same goal you can achieve using and more using other TypeSense that other TypeSense alternative. Also on this dashboard, we have documentation. So you have a link to the documentation. Like I said earlier, the documentation makes it very easy to use TypeSense. It's very easy to use. Like you can, is the documentation is also open source because TypeSense is open source generally. So you can edit page. This edit page means you can actually add the contribution, your own contribution to TypeSense, which will make it easy for you to achieve anything you want to see on TypeSense. So you can suggest a, a new feature or just edit it if you are noticing, if you notice any changes that needs to be made to the documentation. So just go through like developers, I believe before you use any library or any tool, you need to read documentation, how it is used, how it is integrated, how it can be integrated, the advantages, the advantages, and all other things the library or the tool has to offer. So, so as the, so, so you can get it, so that you can get it right at first try, so that you can get how to use it right at the first try. Okay, also on our TypeSense dashboard also, apart from the documentation page, there's also another amazing page called status page. This status page is where you get to see the status that you are running. So this is where you, we have not created a cluster yet, but this is where you get to see is the status of your cluster. I created one earlier. So this is where you tend to see the, how it is running. You can see this one is running very fine. So you can get in case there's any issue. It will show you that yes, the issue with it. And in case you are not good with lights, or you want a very good light for you, maybe at night, you can use the dark mode also. This is also very nice. So, and another amazing thing, feature on this page is that you can get updates about this because you might not be a chance to access your TypeSense dashboard at every point in time. Maybe you're on transit or you're moving, or you, you don't have access to your computer generally. You can activate, you can get updates by signing up to your mail, Slack, web book, or you can use just we'll use one of the I believe one of these options will work fine for you. Yeah. So that that's a very nice that's a very nice update. That's a very nice feature here on this page. So I would advise you to check this page. Just sign up, register with your email. I believe you enjoy it. Another amazing another amazing page is also the account page. I'll go to the clusters page because that's where we are dwelling majorly in this session. So this place you can add this page, you can add your payment method. So you can add your card. If you like to add your card in order to pay to get dedicated clusters. So you, you add your card on that page. In, you can add your card. You can you see what's currently I'm using the free version, which is zero dollars. So I'm not paying any amount to use it for a try. And that's very nice because 
to try it out and see what you want to use you can actually use the free version first then when you see that it's fine you can i think that will convince you to actually pay in order to use type sense and i'm sure everyone that has tried the free version ends up paying or subscribing for the premium and the model and to get more get plus that so that's about this account page you get to see your details and your name Yeah, the next page is well on majorly is when you need to create a new cluster. So in this cluster, when you create a spin up a new cluster, when you spin up a new cluster, you can actually have access, like we saw on the home page, where you can have access to create new collection, where you can have access to create new documents you want to search through, where you can have access to delete, create synonyms, do creation, do all other features, and we'll be doing one. If you create a new cluster here. Yeah, Immediately you click on this button, it will spin up a new cluster where you see the defaults for every free version, where you see the default options you have, where you see the number of mem the memory size you have access to, which is 0 0.5 gig, and you will see the TypeSense version you are using. Currently, you are using TypeSense version of 0 0.2, 1.0, yeah. So, this is where you get to see the details of the cluster you are about to spin. Then, the next thing is to launch the cluster. So, it's very just a few clicks. You are getting to use TypeSense. Yeah, this will take about four to six minutes in order to get the home page to see, activate, make all these features at the sidebar show. So and you see the configuration at the side. You can see 0 0.5 gig RAM space memory versus the regular SSD and other configuration. And when you are when you spin up the cluster, yeah, this will take about four to five, four to six minutes in order to create a new cluster as said here you can see when i created earlier so when you finish creating your cluster this is how you see the home page where you get to use other features so you can generate your api keys for people that want to integrate into their apps you generate your api keys when you click on generate api keys you download it where you see your api keys and there are several articles on Avia website. I would advise you to go on the The URL will be pasted, will be pasted to the chat box where you can see, where you can actually see the content you have created on how to integrate it. There are content on how to create. I pasted the link to the chat box. So when you go there, you see the link on how to integrate it using the API keys you have generated. So the API key has been generated. The next thing now is to actually dive into how TypeSense works, like how to search, how to create a new collection. You can see our cluster is working fine in service, it's very early to use, and the current space taken in the memory is 0%. Yeah, so to get started, click on the new collection. When you click on the new collection, TypeSense makes it very easy for users to use because almost every feature you click on or every every option you see at the sidebar has a predefined or a sample a sample way of that you can copy or modify. It has a sample you can modify in order to get started. You can see this is a new collection and this new collection can be collect can be the collection schema and the schema some developers here have used TypeSense. They have used they have used TypeScript, sorry. And you you get to define type for your different variables or anything you are creating. So here also you can this guides your document you are creating. It guides what you want to search through. For example, we are launching this, we are creating this new schema, and the name of the schema is called companies. When you create the company schema, it has different fields. The schema has the three particular options. It, it has the name, it has the fields. And that's the default sorting field. So this name is the name of the collection. The name of this collection is companies. So you want to create the company's collection. And here the name of the company will be here, which is this company name. And it has the type of string. So it but TypeSense also offers a particular a new update. That's a new update that came with the version 0 0.2. Yeah, the that came with the version 0 0.2, where you need to where you can where TypeSense auto detect your the type of your document so if you are creating a new collection you might not really know all the fields you want to create at once so all the fields you might want to create at once 
and TypeSend makes it easy that even when you just launch, even when you just do auto detection, by so it detects the type of document you are creating. But that's the second option we'll do. So let's use this predefined one or that has been created already. So the type of the company name is string. The number, the second field is the number of the number of employees we have in the company, which is in is in an integer form. So it's not in a string form. If you create it in a string form, you just change it to string. But now it's an integer form. So you just do integer. You put 32 here. So it's a 32 bit integer. And the various types, data types we have on TypeSense. We have the string, we have the Boolean, we have the 32 bit integer, we have 64 bit integer, we have float, and we also have geo points. Yeah, those are the data types that are currently present on TypeSense. So after creating the number of employees, and that thing we want to create is the country the company is located. So this is how our document or what you want to search through will look like. So you can also add another option. For example, I want to add the role of the employees. Can I just add roles here? Yeah. And you know roles will be in string form format. Then the, some might be wondering what this face set means. Okay, this face set makes it it's just to help your search. So immediately you put this face set to true. In, when you are searching through documents, you can actually filter based on this face set field. So you can act, since it's, it's written as true, it will be easy to click on when you want to search. This search has not been activated already because I've not created a, new, a, a collection. So immediately you put it to true, you can actually pick it as an option to search for your docu through your document. So it makes it easy and give you a better search result. So that's why I'm putting this face set. You'll see the better, you understand it better when you're trying to search through a document. So we have our company name, we have our number of employees, we have our roles, the, like the roles of employee. So that's very nice and the location the company is located. So the next thing to do now is to create a uh, collection. And also here yeah, you can see that you can read the documentation. When you click on this link, like maybe you're having, like you're not understanding it better. So you can actually click on this link in order to understand it better. Okay, sorry. There's a mistake here. Okay, so we have created a new collection. Then if you click on this schema, this schema is to check the collection you created, collection schema, how it looks like. You can see how it looks like. The name is companies. We have four memory strands here, which is our country, roles, number of employees, and the company name. Okay, so those are the four memory strands as and the default sorting field, which is number of number of employees. Yeah. So this is where you view the data type of the different fields you want to search through. The company name string, the number of employees integer the row string, then the country string also.